Hello, everybody. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. And today we'll be reviewing the steelbook of the 1964 Mary Poppins. And the movie Mary Poppins Returns. Since the sequel to Mary Poppins was released, I went out to Best Buy and purchased a limited edition collectible steelbook of the original Mary Poppins movie. The steelbook is beautiful. And it has a picture of Mary Poppins on the front cover with the chimney dancers. The color is red, and there's a picture on the back of a kite with flowers up in the air. The flowers are very colorful. The binding is nice. It's black with Mary Poppins in white writing. Then... In the inside cover, there is a watercolor painting of Mary Poppins flying in the sky with her umbrella up in the air, and the town is below her. I was glad when I saw some inside cover work. So just a beautiful steel book overall. I purchased it for nineteen ninety nine, which I thought was a good price for a Blu-ray steel book. As for the sequel, Mary Poppins Returns, I purchased it in 4K Ultra HD for $29.99 at Walmart. Mary Poppins Returns Movie Review. This movie is magical, and I love the animation, and the children are very good actors. There are definitely some things that I really liked about the movie. Emily Blunt is wonderful as Mary Poppins. She's just such a delight to watch on screen. She brings the essence of Julie Andrews' Mary Poppins back to life again. She's also a wonderful singer and has a very good voice and gracefully hits the high notes. Her performance is a little different than Julie's in which she plays a more stricter version of Mary, which is more true to how P.S. Travers wrote the book. I loved how they did Mary Poppins' arrival into the movie. It was so awesome that you see Georgie pulling the kite to try and help her arrive to care for them. It was so delightful and fabulous to watch. It was a nod to the original 1964 film. That was one of the references I really liked. Another aspect of the movie that I really liked was the animation sequences. The scene that really stuck out for me was scene five. Can you imagine that? It was a delight to watch the children semi-excited to take a bath. Then when they notice they're diving into the sea, their faces just light up with excitement. And they think it is so cool. And the color and the imagination for that scene is so awesome, too. Just to know that it was done using practical effects instead of CGI was so amazing. They cut a hole right into the bathtub and put a slide down there. It was so awesome. This is one of my favorite musical numbers in the film because it was done so well. Another musical number that I really liked was the Royal Dalton Bowl. That was another animation sequence that really stuck out for me. It looked like old school animation that was drawn out by hand and not by the computers. Sort of looks like an old film such as 101 Dalmatians. The dancing and the singing was awesome, and it was a very colorful scene to look at. Usually, I think casting children in movies is very daunting task. Because finding the right ones for the role can be hard. They cast each of the bank's children perfectly. They were such great actors for their ages. They really handled their roles well. In Disney movies, they always seem to cast the right children for their roles. In my opinion, they are better actors than Lil Well Miranda. Another part of the movie that I really liked was Meryl Streep as Topsy. She was so good. And she emerged deep into her character. She played this European woman with a strong accent. I didn't even know it was her, to be honest with you, until I actually saw her face. No one transitions more into the role than Meryl fucking Streep. Meryl Streep is a goddess. She's amazing. She's all of the above. No one can play a character better than Meryl. That is what I really liked about the film. Now, we're going to go into what I didn't like about the film so much, because there was definitely some things that needed improvement. 
in my opinion, I didn't like that they cast Lil Lin Well Miranda in the role because he's a theater actor, not a film actor, and that does not translate well. And I didn't think he did his research either. Stage acting is different because they're seeing you from a distance and not close up. In my opinion, I didn't. I don't think he's a very good singer either. He can't match up to point, not by a far shot. I wish they would have cast someone who could sing. Never cast, sometimes never cast Broadway actors into film roles as they're not used to doing film because they look very, very awkward on screen. And another problem I had is the songs aren't really that memorable either, and they could have been so much better. I really liked the score because it had reminiscence of the original movie. Like when I walked away from this movie, I'm not going to be singing any of these songs or memorizing any of the words. They're just sort of forgettable to me. And I wish they were so much better because Disney can do better, and I know it because I've seen films where their music is just amazing, such as the original Mary Poppins, where I walked away memorizing the songs, such as supercalifragilisticexpialidocious, and a spoonful of sugar makes the medicine go down, medicine go down, medicine go down. Those are some of the songs that really stuck out to me in that film, but there was really none in this film. When I was watching this movie, I also thought this was was going to be a fun kids movie. I mean, don't get me wrong, some parts of it are, but other parts are just very sad and depressing for being rated only PG. What is it with Disney movies and the loss of a parent? I just don't get it. In this movie, Michael Banks is grieving the loss of his wife, and sometimes you see it affecting him. The way you see it affecting him and the way he treats his kids is not always nice to them, and he tells them to leave him alone. His character is just very depressing for being a kid's film. I mean, I'm not going to get into the spoilers just to find out how he turns out in the end, because I know a lot of you haven't seen it yet, and, you know, I'm not going to ruin it. Overall, I thought the film was good for being a sequel. This film had some very surprising moments in it, and, um, you know, they were, I was very surprised that Angela Lansbury and Dick Van Dyke made a cameo in this film. I was surprised how well they could sing for being in their 90s. I hope I could see that could put on their age. I would rate this film a B because it was fun to watch, but it wasn't great. It had some very major flaws to it that I thought could have been fixed. I would definitely watch this film again because of Emily Blunt's performance as Mary Poppins. I hope you guys enjoy this review and hit the like and subscribe buttons.